What's up, everybody? You're hanging out with Billy Jean, yours truly, and Eric Schmidt. What is up, my man? Oh, glad to be here. Eric, right, where are you calling in from today? I am in Cary, North Carolina, which is a suburb of Raleigh, our glorious state capital. Yeah, okay, not too far, except through, like all the way across the country. <laughs> a thousand miles or so, that's all. Yeah, no big deal. Uh, well, Eric, uh, today you guys, um, one, thank you for taking the time to uh, to chat and kind of share the story. Eric, how did you meet the Billy Genius Marketing team and uh, even come into this world before we go ahead and jump into the goodies? I, I think it was Social Media Opolis had uh, uh, an email that uh, went out and it mentioned you. And I have uh, run a small ad agency for the last 15 years. Yeah. And basically, we did radio, television, traditional media. I knew about a year and a half ago that I needed to make a change because at the size we're at, we could not survive as a traditional media agency. I was looking for the direction to go, and I had looked at a number of different things. And when I came across uh, Billy Jean's marketing, I, uh, I went to one of your webinars, and I was like, wow, this is, I think, what I want to do. And uh, after a little bit of discussion, I decided, yep, this is the direction that we need to go in Love order it. to remain relevant so that I'm not out of business in another year. And uh, so I signed up for Clicks Into Customers. I was in the January course, and uh, I have been busting my hump ever since trying to become an effective Facebook marketer. Love it, man. So six months you've been with us now, or give us, what is it, July, almost going on seven months. Nice. I love it. Well, I'm glad you're, I'm glad you're here. So Eric, tell us, uh, tell us what happened. Tell us, uh, uh, Eric's got a client and some cool shit just went down. Or I guess I'd say he created some cool shit for this client. Uh, wh what is that that I'm alluding to here? Uh, well, we had um, set up uh, a Facebook campaign and this is part of the this part where we have to remain relevant. We've had this client for a long time and you know we've been doing traditional media for them we've done in recent years a lot of email marketing so how do we remain relevant and uh, using what I've learned in clicks in, into customers and through the program and let me cut you let me cut you off really quick Eric because this is huge and I want everyone to pay attention to this and because I speak to so many people uh, like you seven months ago Eric but you're, you're hitting on a chord for a lot of people is he's saying look we've had this client for a while but the old shit's not working anymore, right? The, the everything that you've built the business on, the, the magazines, et cetera, it's just not as effective. So if you're running an agency out there right now, or you're providing marketing services for your client, and you're doing things that used to work, guess what? All of a sudden, magazines are not going to make a comeback, right? It's not going to come back into fashion. You have to progress and you have to learn. You have to get outside of your comfort zone. So here's Eric, a seasoned guy who's doing his thing and jamming. He's got to hit the drawing board again and say, you know, what? I need to figure this out because once I master it as he is, he's able to get crazy results and he can build it, scale his business like crazy, right? That's exactly right. That's the whole idea is that we're going to put ourselves in a, in a position where we create these case studies, which is what you've been teaching, so that we have the ability to promote ourselves with real and relevant results to yes. the potential new clients. 100%. And it makes the sales process so much easier. So what industry is this client in that we're talking about today? Restaurant business. They uh, they own a restaurant that's actually not too far from where I live and uh, sort of a beer and burger type of uh, joint in a suburban area. Love it. And what I love about what we're talking about here is everyone watching here, you all have a favorite restaurant nearby that can use what Eric's talking about right now. So right now, if you're a marketer and you're like, where do I find clients? You're literally probably watching this and eating at the same time from the restaurant that you should be having pay you a check every month. But you don't know how to take advantage of that. And Eric and I are going to share that with you today. So you yeah, burger joint, they've been around for how long? Uh, 12 or 13 years. 12 or 13 years. And what do they hire you to do? What do they pay you to do? So uh, most of what we do is we send out a weekly email. We uh, have their food features for, for the week. You know, we mentioned what's going on sports-wise. They've got a ton of TVs. They've also got 34 beers on tap. So we'll usually mention some of the beers. Uh, and then we'll also do reputation management um, and, uh, and anything else that needs to be taken care of. So, you know, somebody leaves a bad review, we'll answer that, uh, online and, and, uh, try and, you know, do a little fanny kissing to get that person happy again, stuff like that. Gotcha. And the, um, the emails, is that a big part of how they grow their business? Is that a part of their, their outreach? Yep. They, when we started working with them, we, uh, were doing all radio 
and uh, over time that morphed into emails and so we started building an email list probably about five years ago and as we were building the email list we found that it was kind of difficult to really you know you can you can build it quickly if you're willing to give away a ton of shit if yeah. you're not going to give away a ton of stuff it's a slower process so right. over the years you know it's been sort of you get uh, you know 50 here you get 75 there so we've built that list up to a few thousand people which is a pretty nice. decent number yeah but now we have the ability to probably in the next few months close to double that list Wow okay so really fast I think this is important if you guys have been following these strategy sessions we've talked about this a little bit before but a big opportunity is I love what Eric did is he used to me and actually I would love to know more about this. How did you sell the restaurant on the value in an email list? So all of us in digital marketing world, we understand that, you know, emails are important and it's the blood source of your business, but traditional businesses usually don't, especially a restaurant. They don't email anything. And if they do, it's like once a month, a newsletter that nobody reads. So how did you even tell the client that it was important and is it important? Why is it important? So it's incredibly important because that's how you're able to communicate with the people who are your customers that are loyal enough that they're willing to give you your email, their email address. So the ability to talk to them on a regular basis means that you're bringing them back in on a consistent basis because yep. they see pictures of food uh, that they like. They see that there's a, a cool beer. There, are, uh, North Carolina has become one of the craft brewing capitals of the country. We've got a hundred and 30 some odd craft breweries in the state. So they're able to feature, you know, all the coolest beers and from, and a lot of it's local. So that is a great promotional point. And if you live a yeah. couple miles away from them, you're going to get an email that says, Hey, here's a new beer that we have on tap from this brewery right over on the other side of town. I love it. And so everyone, again, that distribution is huge. And a lot of people think, well, I can just have an Instagram account and that does the same thing. No, it doesn't. When someone's scrolling through and they see, you know, 20,000 other pictures the same day of a burger, that's helpful, but nothing is going to drive people in, like bringing some kind of incentive through email, et cetera. And everyone knows that. So again, even if something as basic as going to a restaurant and helping them build an email list is going to make them a ton of money. If they, if they, if they lost all their social profiles and they just had that email list, they would still be able to run a huge promotion. So good job to you on that and, and well done there on, on bringing them there. So on average, how many emails would you guys be bringing in a month for a client like that, if you don't mind us asking? Uh, well, there are two times that, that uh, you're going to see different numbers. So if every table, we designed cards a while back, and the cards sit on the table, so you can fill those out. The wait staff is supposed to ask you to, um, if, you've got, uh, if you're on the email list, a lot of times they don't. So you might see 15 to 20, 25 uh, signups without a push. I try to get the managers at, at the uh, store to do a push every couple of months whereby they'll offer an incentive of 50 or 75 bucks and say, all right, the person that gets the most signups is going to be able to uh, get a $50 gift certificate right. or gift card or something like that. And that will usually get 100 to 125 over the course of a month. Okay, cool. So 100 to 125 and for easy math, let's just say 100 just because it'll be easy to follow along. So on average, they're building up their email list, about 100 people who are coming in there and, uh, and building them up over time. So about 100. And so now here we are, and you recently ran a campaign. And what happened? So, well, I, I used all of the techniques I've learned in clicks into customers and through the camp program. And we ran a campaign last week. We started on Monday. And by the time we got to Friday, we had Friday afternoon, we had over 200 people that had submitted their email address. And at that point, we had spent, uh, I think it was $71 and some change. <laughs> and when I stopped the campaign on Sunday afternoon, we were at 253 emails in the course of six days. <laughs> so one week, he brings in 250 emails. If you guys didn't just hear, before it was 100 a month. So literally like 4x the growth of that and only spent $70 to do so. So again, I have something important for you. So how was their reaction to that? So he's pretty damn happy. I love it. Does, now, how does that work with you guys right now? Does he have access to the emails also? Does he control the sins? Do you mostly handle that for him? How's that relationship? We do it all. So we basically, we uh, um, tell him what we're going to do. We show him the emails so that he can uh, approve them before we send them out. But when it comes to uh, maintaining the email list, when it comes to the, the push for recruiting on this stuff, we do all of that. 
Love it. And what, if you don't mind sharing with us, what kind of campaign were you running to have that happen? Because I know there's a lot of people right now working with restaurants or that want to, and they don't even know the first steps of, of how to go about doing something like that. So what was the hook there? Well, the hook is that each week we're going to give away a dinner for four. That's going to be in the form of a $50 gift certificate. His Love it. Food cost is about 30%. So that $50 gift certificate is going to cost him a third of the, yeah. what is that, 13 or 14, 15, 16 bucks? Yeah, so 15 bucks. The cost is yeah, relatively low, but the hook is that we're giving away the um, giving away that gift certificate every week during this promotional period. And a great job too. And everyone, this is important, is he has a he has a promotion that he can continuously run again and again and again. That's called an asset, right? Something that he can actually use to really gain leverage in the business. A lot of times we think of promotions and they're usually one off. You can't do them again. You can't do them for another year. But I love that of like, hey, let me make sure I come to the restaurant every week so I have another chance to win. I, you know, I think that's fantastic. And I, and I think that was really smart on your play to do so. So what are your next steps with this client and what's your kind of goals there? Well, basically, the reason that we're doing this is because the email list will get stale. There's always people that are going to be unsubscribing. So if you're not, if you just let the email list sit there, it's going to die and it's going to shrink. Yep. So we have to be constantly growing it in order for them to remain relevant. The other thing is they're in an area that's growing rapidly, so the amount of competition is just incredible. They have, wow. uh, on a, on a, every couple of months, you have another place similar to theirs, and a lot of these are the national chains that come in and they open up. So yep. if we don't keep adding people on, and since it's growing, you got new people moving in, so we've got yep. to get to those people as well, and if they haven't been in yet, they don't have an opportunity to sign up for the email list. So now we can get them when they come in the restaurant, we can get them when they're uh, looking on Facebook. We have multiple ways that we're gonna be able to keep that list growing and keep it growing quickly, and that's gonna end up resulting in him taking, you know, if you can take one visit that was gonna go to a competitor away per month, that's huge. Yep. Yeah. What What are you um What are you using to track all of this? So I, this is actually an important question here, and I want I want to understand. I want everyone watching here to understand too. What does the owner of the restaurant like count as a win? You know, like what gets him excited? What are, What are the expectations that he has of you? So his expectations are that I'm going to put relevant information out there that when people come in, they are gonna talk about it so that he knows that they're seeing it. I give him the numbers on uh, usually about every four to six week basis. We'll sit down, have a meeting, run through all of the numbers for the uh, email open rates and things like that, and go over what the strategies need to be so that we can stay on top of it and make sure that the competition isn't gonna uh, take all the of their clientele away. Gotcha. Okay. So what are you doing? Like, so when you're reporting to him, what does that conversation sound like? How are you tracking these results? How are you showing him your value? So, well, we talk about the, uh, the email open rates, you know, and you can look and you can see that there are certain emails and, and in particular, when you mention food specials and you get food that has creative names to it, that those get opened at a much higher rate than just an ordinary email. If I send out an email that, that says, uh, oh, there's a football game on TV this weekend, you know, the, the, the open rate might be 12 or 15%. If I put a name in there that's an interesting name, and they uh, did, uh, it was a, some sort of uh, pork uh, salad, and it was Oink Cluck Green was the name of the uh, dish. Yeah. And we put that, used that as a subject line. So, the, uh, it, and what happened was the uh, open rate on that was about 30% higher than it normally wow. would be. So, he nice. little wins, and you can see them statistically when you're looking at the, at the email data. And we've got all the data going back since we started doing this uh, five or six years ago. So, you've got a, a long way to look at it and, and be able to compare. Okay. So, let's talk a little bit about scale, okay? Um, What's your kind of vision for your agency and where would you like to be in the next next few months from like now until the end of the year? I'd like to be Eric Schmidt is marketing. <laughs> I want to be like you. <laughs> <laughs> so you kind of so you want to scale you want to have a bunch of restaurants, right? Not just one, you want to have 30, 40, 50, 100 restaurants all paying you monthly, right? Yep. Okay, so I'm going to give you the most helpful advice I could ever give you right now. It's so important in regards to scaling and growing to the next one. 
Okay. So if we were to approach another restaurant right now, they would say, uh, okay, Eric, like, uh, that's cool what you did. We see the power of email and stuff, and it's great to get insights about what our consumers are responding to, and we appreciate that. However, right now we're missing that. Well, guess what? We spent $70 and generated this amount of dollars, right? That is the key to getting into any business is going with straight numbers, but the type of numbers that say, hey, you spent this much and you made this much. And we have to be able to clearly, clearly show that. So the best advice I can give it to you right now is with this restaurant promotion that you have is we need some way to show what percentage of those people are coming in and buying and what they're buying so uh, we can really track the, the revenue that's generated as a result of that. Um, and do, do we have any idea right now or how feasible do we think that is in regards to getting them to track some things? And let's talk about some systems we can put in place to help accomplish that. He's pretty good when I've asked him to track. We did a, a test on Facebook with carousel ads uh, back in, uh, it was May, and we ran yeah. for four weeks to try and promote a lunch special. And he was able to give me the specific sales of those food items um, cool. compared to the previous four-week period. The carousel ads um, boosted sales by 11% for that four-week period from the previous four-week period. So we can... That right there is exactly the type of data you got to save right there and have. That is what's going to open up the doors to the restaurant. So the idea when you come into any kind of industry, right, and if you're going to look to be, you know, Eric is marketing and uh, take over the kind of restaurant game here, which is, seems like a niche that you're interested in because you've been with them for a few years, is you got to identify the biggest problem that that industry is facing. So right now, I think the biggest, uh, well, one of the biggest problems that restaurants face is they don't get enough button seats, right? Like you said, it's competitive as hell. They can eat anywhere in the world. So what you should really do is there are days when most restaurants lose money because it's just not that busy. They're still paying for staff and everything else that comes along with that, right? And so catering all of the emails that you collected in creating busyness on their slow days. Like let's say just hypothetically Tuesday is just a shitty day. Nothing happens and leveraging your list or whatever you're doing to fill up that day specifically. That's how you earn the business of the other guys. Then when you go to another restaurant and you say, Hey, Mr. Restaurant, uh, I'm the guy who takes your slowest day and I make it and I make it, you know, uh, I make it pop it. Right. And I turn that into a profitable day. And they say, okay, well, how are you going to do that? Well, I'll show you what I did for this restaurant when Tuesday was his dentist day, but we ran this promotion and this is what happened. Do you have 10 minutes where we can hop on a computer so I can show you the exact promotion that I ran and then you walk them through the call exactly how I show in all of our camp calls and you sell them, right? But that's going to be your biggest hook. So you really want to identify a few key problems that they're facing that solves, like, you know, slow days that are costing you more than you're actually bringing in, um, you know, how to stand out from the competition, having an asset like an email list so they can broadcast promotions. And you really want to structure a package that you're going to the restaurants with. And it needs to be the same package every single time. Because if you have carousel ads here and then you kind of are just kind of filling it out and let the data, it'll be cool and you'll be able to bring good results, but at a pace that's not organized and it'll be impossible to grow because you won't understand what you have to do uh, to fulfill uh, those needs. So for example, Let's say that your program is creating weekly dinners and creating a, uh, uh, an email list for, uh, let, me, let, me, let me back up and clarify. So there's so many things going on in my brain. I'll give you a very straightforward plan. So this promotion that you're running right now is awesome, right? They're happy. They're getting results. They're getting movement. Yeah. Step one is you have to document how much money is being made from that. We need to take you know, a month, no matter what it takes, sit down with the restaurant owner. And since you know how many is local, this is what I'll recommend, Eric, is I think you should bring your video camera down there, especially since you just started running this. I think you should document it and talk to the owner and say, hey, what's going on? You know, uh, what is our average rates right now? Like how many emails are we building up? And just get them saying all the shit so you can show before and after on video. So sit down with them, have them clearly, very, very clearly state that this is making him money as a result of your efforts. And then you go to the restaurant, the next restaurant with the same exact ad campaign, which is what, $50 off, uh, $50 or win 50 buck coupon or whatever. 
Yeah. Forgive me, that's your email? Yep. Yep. And so I would run that, and that is one campaign that you sell to a restaurant. So do not approach a restaurant and be the marketing guy who says, I'm going to assess your website, who says, I'm going to, you know, do your emails. I'm going to create this for you. You know, I'm going to come in and meet with you face to face. Don't be that guy. Just be Eric, the guy who kills it with this weekly giveaway. And we make money from that and only sell that single service. However, I would do something along the lines of once a week after you name the winner on the slowest day, you give the losers a comp like kind of like a constellation gift to be able to come in on Tuesday during those dead times and they can get like a, a free a free soda, a free drink, a free dessert, a free something, or half off of something or a happy hour for that dead day. So in other words, you're announcing a what was that? That's a great idea because yeah. that list of people who didn't win something, they still want to win. And if we can bring them back in very quickly, now you've got uh, engagement, and that's when you could turn them into a uh, permanent uh, customer. Exactly, right? Because the majority of the people are going to lose. So if we can give them that constellation gift to fill up the dead days, boom, that's it. So that's what you really want to track. So every week you run the same promotion. You know, hey, welcome to our email list. Well, sorry you didn't win, but come in during this time here on this day, and you can you enough as same to tweak. Well, next thing you know, two months later, 1,600 people know about that promotion, and now that slow day, because every special happy hour between that four to seven, that really gets it moving. You see what I'm saying? And so just having that type of clarity and that kind of start to finish with the product that you're selling, and I say product even though it's a service, because you want to sell your service like it's a product. And as soon as you can do that, Eric, that is when you scale the hell out of your business and it's repeatable. So for example, if you're the guy who has this, uh, what do we call it? Just like the, the the restaurant giveaway show, whatever it is through Facebook, like you're, you're, you're the guy who does that, then once you identify the steps necessary to create that promotion, you then hire an account manager to actually do all of those steps for you. Then you can focus on the growth. And then as you get more people to say yes and you have multiple case studies, you also hire somebody to go out and then to be the new heir to sell the people. So you have one person selling the restaurants, giving them the pitch of what you did. And basically all they're doing on the sales calls is just sharing results with them and saying, hey, do you want the same results? And then you have someone else who's actually fulfilling and creating the campaigns that you really created that they're duplicating again and again and again and again for the other restaurants. And it needs to be that simple. Now, if you want to send continuous emails every week, then you need to also create templates that you can use to the next restaurant. And what you also need to realize is that your promotion is working great right now for not just a restaurant, but specifically a sports bar. There's so many restaurants out there. Don't waste your time being the all around restaurant guy. Go specifically to the sports ones. So then when you're creating your email templates, and all that shit, you can use the same ones and just change the name. Because if there's a big football game, that's going to apply to every single sports bar. Right. So do you see how we get micro niche and all of a sudden you have more repeatable processes and more templates you can use again and again and again, and that is the key to scaling. And then once you have that all lined out and you have someone selling for you, you have an account manager and you're overseeing the project, now you say, okay, we killed it for sports bars, now let's grow our business by also going into fine dining. And then you run the fine dining campaign the same way. So another asset that you could bring to the table, Eric, in addition to that, because it's an easy campaign to run, is run a birthday campaign. Facebook allows you to target people by their birthdays, give them a voucher to come in on their birthdays and have them booked. And that's something that's cost them almost nothing to run. And you can just do that on a continuous basis. And it's part of the package. It's another, another service that you sell. And you can even leverage it as a bonus. So, hey, by the way, if you guys sign up now, I'll also throw in a birthday campaign for you. We get a lot of killer results. Excellent. Susan saying. Yeah, I know there's a lot of information. And it was, I kind of like was processing so much. <laughs> So yeah, it makes perfect sense. Things like the, you know, we do send out birthday emails already. So targeting them on Facebook now is another avenue that adds value to what we're providing for the exactly. customer and becomes a saleable point that we can
use when we have the they just use all the targeting that happened. Stepping back and identifying your easiest wins, like the ones where you know you can just come in and get results, putting that together as one package and just focus on selling that package. But the key to selling it is going to be to document the profit that's the result of what you were doing. That is the magic, magic, magic words. Because a lot of the restaurant people are like, okay, we, we've seen the branding stuff before. We've seen the PR stuff before where they get written up. But when you come to the table and you've got tangible results, something that nobody else has, yep. that's when you become it. And then also, too, uh, use Upwork.com <clears throat> and have someone uh, for like, you know, five bucks an hour or something, four bucks an hour um, in the Philippines or, you know, or India, either one. I mean, there's a bunch of places. But create a prospecting list of all the sports bars that are very similar to the one that you have. And so that way you know who your prospects are and it's very clear how you get them, right? And so let's say your goal is to make, you know, $20,000. Well, you put together a, you know, a thousand dollar package for the restaurants and then you have this list of restaurants who need that service. And then you just keep fucking calling and, and giving demos until you get 20 S's and all of a sudden you're at $20,000 a month. But it's that type of simplicity and that type of focus that's going to get you that. Uh, would you recommend making a, a video that I can use as a sort of generic video to send them and then to get them engaged and then get them on the phone for a personal pitch? 100%. 100%. Leverage the results of that before and after with your guy down the street. So make sure he's included in that video. Make it like four or five minutes and just kind of explain what you do. And then um, exactly once so here's the second step is once you have the name of those restaurants, also have the prospecting person include those emails and they can send out the emails for you. So then you can continue focusing on your business, you know what I mean, doing other things, and that will be happening. And then when someone replies to the email, you set up a demo like we're doing now, and then you go through the screen share method that we go over in camp. That's it. You know? Makes an awful yeah. lot of sense. <laughs> yeah, man. And then obviously, like, as you're building out the campaigns, um, you know, bring them to camp calls so I can go through them with you, and we'll, and we'll bang on out, you know, and I'll kind of critique them live and, and all that good stuff. So. Excellent. I hope that was helpful, man. Like again, it was yeah, it was, it was a lot going on, but I hope that was that was clear. So no, that that's uh, excellent guidance because a lot of what you're talking about, I've seen you talk about before, and yeah. I just hadn't my brain hadn't necessarily processed it and said, hey, I can apply it to this because I just had this success. You know, yeah. I'm busting my rear end trying to get the the Facebook stuff to work, and I finally had this really nice success, and so I haven't quite. Um, process that all into my brain to to leverage it fully yet so this is a uh, very helpful uh, in terms of how I'm gonna be able to move forward love it and sometimes again it's just doing that same thing and hearing it so many times um, you know and hearing it specifically for your business is really helpful just bring that kind of clarity where you go okay I get it I see how I'm going to get to point uh, B and that's what's missing a lot I think whenever there's a lack of growth within a company it's almost always because there's a lack of clarity you know how do we do it right? And you're trying to envision something that you haven't done before, so it becomes even more challenging, right? And that's why it's helpful to have, you know, calls like this and, and the camp calls. So, uh, yep, well, cool, Eric. Man, I, will, I really want to thank you again for taking the time to do it. And again, everyone watching, like, big shout out to you, Eric. Like, way to continue taking action. Like, again, he's been with us for six or seven months. And as you said, he's been busting his butt to, like, get results. Like, any skill set worth having, anything in life worth having, takes time, hard work, and sacrifice. And that's what you've been doing, and that's now why you're killing it for your restaurant. And uh, I, that's really cool, man. And uh, it's just impressive to see, you know, um, I, I know I believe you can only fail if you quit. So I love the fact that you're doing that. I'm super excited to do another one of these in three months when you're like, dude, I got so many restaurants calling me. I don't know what to do, <laughs> to do with myself. And also, too, oh, huge tip before I let you go, big tip. Um, when you're doing the prospecting for the list, Try and find franchise restaurants because if you get in with them, then they will put you and they will sell for you and they'll put you in the rest of the restaurants. So if you can get in there for a chain and a case study, that's what you want to do because then they become a salesman for you and they'll bring you more business than you can handle. So you leverage the little guy individual to get in with the big companies that can really scale your success. Excellent. Well, Eric, for everybody on the fence in regards to joining clicks and the customers or joining camp or working with us, what would you tell them? I would tell them uh, get off the fence and do it because it's well worth the investment. And that's what it is. You're investing in your future. You're not just pissing money away. And believe me, I pissed a little bit of money away on a couple of things I thought. So so have I. So have I. <laughs> I found you. So, and the reason that I'm, I've stuck with this is because I can see the, the enormous potential. And 
what I've learned, nobody else is teaching. Need it. So I, I uh, appreciate what you're doing because it makes it uh, a lot easier for people like me who want to learn and grow and, and be successful in Facebook and with their own businesses. I love it, man. Thank you for the kind words. And again, when you guys join our community at clicksinacustomers.com, use passcode BOSS and apply, uh, you get to hang out with people like Eric, right? Like, I think some people underestimate how important it is to have a group of people all doing the same thing. Anytime someone succeeds, it's always because they have a team. You know what I mean? Even if they don't realize it, no one's doing it by themselves. And so if you're right now feeling super alone, like I'm just trying to figure it out, you keep guessing and shit, stop. Just get help, hang out with people like Eric, hang out with me, hang out with our team and everybody else in camp, and uh, we will light a fire under your butt. We're on calls every week talking about shit, showing real life campaigns, going through stuff like you know what Eric's talking about right now. So right now, if you're curious, like what the hell are they talking about? What do you mean running these campaigns? Well, you should make the investment and come hang out with us so you can see it. So uh, Eric, again, thanks for your time, man. I really appreciate it, and uh, I'll see you in a call. All right. Thank you, Billy Jean. Later, buddy. Thank you.